Good morning. It's so nice to be with you. <laughs> it's so nice to have you. Well, we just because this is breaking while we're talking is in the Rittenhouse trial. Uh, go ahead, Travis. What what are you? The judge has dismissed the charge of possession of a firearm by someone under the age of 18. And we can't quite figure out why he he didn't like the he just apparently doesn't like the statue. This judge is I don't even know what to say, Jill. This judge is a disgrace in this Rittenhouse trial. I mean, th- this makes no sense legally. Just that part of it. Right. It's, I am losing faith in this judge. Um, This decision seems incredible, and the timing of it is incredible. There's nothing much that anyone can do on the day of instructions and closing arguments to appeal his interpretation of the Wisconsin law saying that it's vague, um, which seems to be what he's saying when Throughout this trial, it's been quite clear that a 17-year-old was physically shown to be in possession of an AR-15, and there doesn't seem to be anything in the Wisconsin law that makes me question that he violated that law. So how he could not be charged with illegal possession seems to me, uh, uh, you don't have to buy the gun to be right. in possession of the gun. Uh, people are charged well, with possession of stolen guns. Well, someone said, like, I, I don't think it's the winning argument conservatives think it is, that, oh, he didn't cross state lines, it was an illegally purchased straw purchase of a gun. Is the, a stronger, right. yeah. But, I mean, I think Claire McCaskill made the point yesterday on Meet the Press, Jill, that it's just this trial in the Ahmad Arbery uh, tragedy, it's just, it, these trials seem to be about the hunting of people and whether we're okay with vigilante justice. Well, it's, yes, they are both vigilantes. There's no question about that. The judges in both cases have done some things that are quite stunning. Um, in this case, the, the Rittenhouse case, the judge's ringtone. Now, first of all, yeah. the judge's phone going off twice during the trial. I mean, who has their phone on right. when yeah. they're the judge? Who, I mean, it's illegal for any other party to have the phone on. Right. But you know what his ringtone is? Yeah, the Trump rally song. It's fantastic. Exactly. <laughs> it is the Trump rally song. Yes. And he has done so many other things that I find show a bias. His attack on the pro totally ignored. Um, he has really shown to me a bias. And I think it's dangerous. The judge in the Arbery case allowed the peremptory challenges to be used to strike all but one person of color from the jury. Yeah. That is wrong. Yeah. And if the government did it, it would be an appealable issue. The question is here where if there's an acquittal, the government doesn't get to appeal an acquittal. And it isn't a fair jury when you have, it, it's not fair to the victim. Yeah. It's not fair to the jurors who might have sat on that jury. Yeah. That's really a bad thing. So, and it's not good for our system of justice for people not to trust it because of something like that. Is it not an, I mean, I don't know what the legal term is, but is it not, it seems clear to me that Kyle Rittenhouse went to provoke violence. You know, I mean, you you can't say I went to help people with an AR-15. I mean, I, I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I mean, first of all, in terms of his defense of, it was self-defense, you've hit on the exact point. Did he provoke it? Of course he provoked it. He was carrying this long gun. He was pointing it. He definitely was provoking this behavior. And I thought one of the best parts of the cross-examination when when he was asked, well, you said you came here to render medical aid. Did you ever render medical aid? No. Did you even offer to help the people you shot who were calling for help? No, he didn't. That sort of, to me, says this wasn't self-defense. He was out there gunning for people. Yeah. And Travis, go ahead. You keep going uh, to break I got in. a little detail for you on this one. Um, oh, good. So apparently the, the defense argued that the Wisconsin statute had an exemption that could be read to clear Rittenhouse. That except, exception involves whether or not a rifle or a shotgun is short-barreled. The prosecutors uh, conceded in court Monday that Rittenhouse's rifle was not short-barreled, 
and that's why it was being why the charge is being dismissed. So it's okay to have a hunting rifle. Oh yeah. Okay, let's move on. We've got a lot to get to. Yeah. So um, obviously, uh, you know, the piece that your uh, colleague, your sister-in-law, the fantastic podcast sisters-in-law, uh, that Joyce Vance wrote about Steve Bannon's subpoena cases taking longer than we want to. That's a good thing. And we were all like, oh! <laughs> um, <laughs> but you sort of reaffirmed uh, what she said about this new, you said this may be, may be why it took so long to indict Bannon, which means future referrals to U.S. Attorney Graves will only take days, not weeks. Hooray for prompt justice, the rule of law, and three co-equal branches of government. So he was only uh, he was only sworn in last Friday. So that's part of why Jill was urge or excuse me, Joyce was urging us to stay calm. Right. Well, her point was it is better to take the time to get it right than to have. If what Travis is saying is correct, than to have an indictment that falls short because you weren't careful in the drafting. And it also is important to have the right people signing the indictment. And this was Graves, the new U.S. attorney appointed by Biden, who signed it. And it, it could be that they just waited until then. Um, you know, I, I shared everybody else's anxiety about why is it taking so long? This is a clear cut case. And the indictment itself of Bannon is very well crafted and lays out all of his what I would call contempt, not just the, in the legal sense of contempt of Congress, but his contemptuous behavior toward yeah. Congress in not showing up. And um, he does have a defense, which is his lawyer has sent letters saying he doesn't have to testify because, which is completely wrong and not based on any good law. But that may be enough. There is something known as reliance on counsel that will get you out of things like this. That would be really terrible. Um, but all that means is he would then have to be shown to be wrong, which he is. There right. is no executive privilege here. And he'd be have to show up. And then he, he might claim the Fifth Amendment, but he has no executive privilege. So, but here's what brings us to the question I don't still understand. Is, as you know, your friend Glenn Kirshner keeps saying they should also be using uh, inherent contempt. Because explain that to us. This is to punish you for contempt of Congress, but it's not going to actually force him to testify or, or produce the documents. Um, why are they not also doing inherent contempt? Well, there are actually three things they can do. Criminal contempt, which is a referral to the Department of Justice. Civil contempt, which would jail him uh, unless and until he testifies. So that that's intended to force someone to testify because they hold the jailhouse keys the other is the inherent contempt which means they don't need the department of justice to intervene they don't get any better results either way um, they cannot force him to testify he can stay in jail either civil or right. criminal and criminal is intended to you did it you're done, it's over, you can't open the jailhouse door. And it does send a message that's maybe stronger to other potential witnesses. Um, would Bannon tell the truth? That's the first question you have to ask. And based on the fraud charges that he got pardoned for by President Trump of defrauding Trump supporters by saying, give me your money and we'll build the wall for you right. because the government's not doing it. And then he kept the money. He didn't use it for that purpose. Uh, there is no wall being built. He's probably very comfortable lying. So well, yeah, and being a martyr and using this to fundraise, and yeah, I mean, so that. Exactly. But I mean, it does seem like you know this has sent a message, as you just said, Jill, to like listen to Mike Flynn. In my case, you know, we're going to respond to the uh, to the uh, requests, and I, you know, I mean, I don't have anything to hide. There's mm. nothing. There's nothing there, and I and I. Uh, and I think that what we are uh, what we're facing is a, a clear assault on our basic rights and, and principally our freedom to speak freely in this country and to peaceably protest for things that we believe are false or fraudulent. OK, but the good news is the, the ban and indictment has made them stop at least yucking it up on Fox News and saying we're not going to cooperate in any way. So at least he's saying, you know, it's sent but it hasn't stopped 
Bannon from having his own podcast mm -hmm. in which he keeps repeating the same old lies. Right. Yeah. Um, he's, he's, he hasn't stopped one bit. So he's yeah. not chastened even by being indicted. He's turned himself in this morning. Um, I haven't heard yet whether he's being detained immediately or whether he's being given you know, some kind of bail to get out and make his argument about why he has some executive privilege, which hopefully will be decided very quickly. It's certainly gonna be decided soon in one of the many pending cases about privilege. Yeah. Um, okay. So but speaking of which, uh, you commented on him saying this weekend, if we're going to have one nation under God, which we must, we have to have one religion, one nation under God and one religion under God. And you just said this is appalling <laughs> and totally contrary to the First Amendment. I mean, I, it is just, you know, people think you're being hyperbolic when you talk about them wanting to have a theocratic autocracy or fascism. And, you know, we go, no, listen to them. Believe them when they when they say something, right? It, it, that was one of the worst things I've ever heard. And someone, I'm sure, deliberately misinterpreted my reference to the First Amendment, which was meant to say, we have separation of church and state. We cannot have one religion. And we cannot establish a religion as being freedom of speech, yeah. which is not at all. He can say whatever he wants. It's just the scary thing that he's trying to encourage the establishment of a theocracy. And um, autocracy is already long in yeah. danger. Mm -hmm. uh, I just interviewed um, for iGen Politics podcast, Fiona Hill, who agrees with me that we are in 1930s Germany right now and that it can happen well, here. You retweeted uh, Mehdi Hassan, who said we've reached, reached the book burning stage of right wing American authoritarianism. And you said it can happen here. It is happening yeah. here. What are you doing to stop it? Um, by the way, your bookings are getting worse for that because I am booked with you on next gen politics <laughs> after yes. Fiona Hill. I. I we are so excited to have you as our guest. Are you kidding me? We're the thrilled. the uh, brilliant young uh, UCLA kid that you do it with, I, I said, you know, I should be your enemy for life because I graduated from USC, but you use the, the magic words, which are Jill Weinbanks. So I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he told me. And, and I hope you'll get to meet him because, you know, he's now, he's actually on campus now. Last year, yes. he did his first year from his bedroom in Buffalo Grove. Now he's right. on the UCLA campus. Oh, well, that's yeah. fully in enemy territory for me, but all right. <laughs> Westwood, um, you. Real quick. <laughs> I, forgive him, so forgive him. Is this not actionable? This First of all, how many coup memos were there? But now we read about Jenna Ellis also wrote a coup memo about how to overturn the election. Mm -hmm. Is this not illegal? What Can you explain this to me? Well, I can't because there is no explanation for Eastman. Um, you know, everybody else has gotten Eastman this memo has gotten all the attention. Uh, but Jenna Ellis was up there with Rudy and Sydney, and somehow, you know, people aren't hearing her name. She attacked me on the Joy Reid show when I mentioned something, and I don't remember the context, but I said something about white male privilege that only, you know, a white male could say or do that. Yeah. She said, You're a white racist. <laughs> oh. Oh, wow. Well. I mean, okay. All right. <laughs> Maya <laughs> Wiley grabbed my hand because she and I were in the studio together with Corrine Jean-Pierre and I think Mimi Roca and, and Jenna was not in the studio. And you can imagine my reaction to being wow. attacked that way. And I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a prosecutor. I, I'm a trial lawyer. I'm used to defending myself. And I was right. like ready to go. And Maya grabbed my hand and said, don't even respond. Yeah. And she calmed me down. So I uh. I didn't but yeah. joy said i can't believe you said that so yeah oh yeah, I yeah. Felt vindicated oh my god yes absolutely well that's more reason i already hated her um real quick trump criminal probe entering new phase in georgia as georgia da seeks special grand jury um does this making you a little more hopeful <laughs> some more justice I, you know me i'm pollyanna anyway so i am <laughs> always hopeful i think the system you know in watergate justice prevailed democracy worked i I still think it can, and I think it doesn't have to take so long. Yeah. We went from subpoena in middle of April to a Supreme Court decision in July. It could happen here too. There's no reason for them not to come out and say there's no executive privilege. All of you get in there 
and start testifying. And if you want to claim privilege, it has to be on an individual basis. You get asked a question, you can only claim privilege there. Yeah. And by yeah. the way, the former president doesn't decide if there's privilege. The current president. Thank does. you. And this is why we're happy to get you because as soon as that case comes down, we won't be able to get you because they'll be like, "There's, it's on tape. Call Jill Weinbanks. <laughs> right. <laughs> Call the Watergate lady. <laughs> they got it on tape in Georgia. <laughs> All right. But you made me put on a pin as we were talking. I, I, the new sheriff is. There it is. Yeah. There, uh, there it is. All the right. The sheriff is Congress is going to get them. Good. And get them to start testifying so that the American people know what happened and Congress can start enacting legislation that will prevent it from reoccurring. Absolutely. We love you. Goodbye. I'll, Bye. I'll, Thank I'll, you. Thanks, All right. Joe. See, Thanks you, Joe. see you soon. Bye. 23 minutes after the hour. This Ow, 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 ow,